when soft commodities go hard. Yeah. So it's the Market Sniper and welcome. We're talking to you uh, about soft commodities. We don't always do soft commodities, but we actually covered coffee quite a bit uh, before. We're going to be talking to you about cacao, coffee, uh, and both kinds of coffee, Arabica and Robusta. Robusta bean uh, can grow at higher altitudes and lower altitudes rather than that perfect mid-range that Arabica requires above sea level. Um, and more temperamental, smoother bean, less caffeinated the Arabica. The connoisseurs choice the more expensive bean, robusta, bitter and plenty of kick. Um, yes, mule spike it is. Mule spike coffee. Many coffees actually are made up of a blend. We're going to be talking to you about the coffee markets technically, but before we go there, when the, this particular edition of when soft commodities go hard, we're going to look at an erectile projectile. That is the market of cacao. Here we go. Have a look and tell me what you see. By the way, in case you're thinking, Francis, you always talk about big time frames going log scale. This is the log scale chart. This is when soft commodities go mega pumpamental crypto. That's right. Uh, in fact, if you want to see it in regular scale, allow me to give you a little demonstration. Even flatter as a pancake they go, that little setup. Overperformance, this is an extremity of overperformance. And of course, we're seeing now a little bit of Bloomberg news saying, well, the supply in Africa and this and that. Yes, there will be industry specifics. But let me tell you something else. On a far bigger time frame, every version of general commodity will start to do this because they have destroyed your money. That's right. They tax you, income tax. They tax you VAT every time you buy something, value added tax. They tax you when you die on already taxed assets that were bought after tax. They tax you when you die called death taxes, inheritance taxes. And then they think, let's steal a little more. That's right. It's called inflation. And they think, let's dilute them. Let's allow. We all must, must have inflation. Deflation, bad. Imagine your money buy more stuff than normal. Deflation, very bad. Very bad for them, not bad for you. You've been sold a pup being sold, told that a small amount of inflation, good. Guess what? That's how the insiders put you on the wrong side of a compound interest equation so that they can methodically, by decree, steal from you slowly. There was once a thief who was a computer programmer and every time there was a calculation being done in his uh, insurance company stroke bank, uh, they were calculating values of policies, etc. He scraped all the below one dollar decimals. That's right. And sent them to his bank account. So every time there was a truncation instead of a rounding uh, that went on and values were collected. And he started to accumulate by minutia, but many, many times on many times that there were uh, divisors and multipliers and formulas applied to calculate the rates of how much somebody's policy will have gone up tied to this ETF with that cost. And of course, all these integers were being collected, these digitals, and he was making a small, small fortune by decree, by volume, small amounts regularly. Now, I'd like to tell you they're taking small amounts with the inflation, but they're not. They're not at all. They're actually compounding you negatively. And they lie about that inflation number as well. So in actual fact, all things are going up in an environment with technical innovation that we should actually be this inflationary. We get more efficient. Competition sees other people being prepared to do the same amount of work to the same uh, standard, but potentially take a slightly less profit. And that always leads to disinflation. However, due to your central banking cartel, not only do they skim all those benefits that would have accrued to you with greater buying power and a slightly decreasing cost of living in everything you bought, they skim all of that and they flip it the other way. That's what I mean when I say to you, they are putting you on the wrong end of a compound interest equation. Cacao. Let's talk the cacao chart again. Here we go and we look at it. By the way, as someone full of energy and beans, I don't take any alcohol and I even now don't take any coffee and that's been standing for a long, long time. Um, in fact, this is my substitute drink right here, the erectile projectile, uh, the aforementioned. Um, and I think it has those properties as well, a bit of nitrogen in the juice. Woohoo! We're not lagging in energy, we're just not overstimulating our nervous system in the caffeinated way. So I make, by the way, a little cup, cup, 
coffee, cacao, no coffee, cacao, put in a little bit of herbs and spices, you know, the cayenne pepper, the turmeric, fight all those cancers that have been pumped into you by all the various industrial complexes from the food industrial chain to the pharma industrial chain to the god knows who that all want you dead and we keep putting all these good little bits in um, and we make distilled water real almonds real almond milk that's right we grind it we soak them overnight then we grind it and we take that beautiful juice and that is my dairy yes that's my uh, drink of choice early in the morning uh one day i must do a recipe for you but anyway the prices are climbing. Shock, horror, time to hoard. Uh, and that, of course, only pushes the prices up more. They're telling you Africa not producing much. Blah, 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 blah. There will be ebbs and flows in production all the time. But one of the reasons commodities, and by the way, commoditization of something means that it is no longer an arena of super normal profits. When a product has become commoditized, you need massive scale, huge efficiency, and you make only normal profits. That means after everything, you have pretty fine margins. It's kind of like you've already paid for the printing presses to cut rubber crocs out of blocks of rubber. You've already paid for the dye. You've got the factory churning the buggers out. And now you just need to put in the rubber and the dye and keep churning them out ever and ever and ever. And that is unfortunately no longer such a sought after item and the price drops very, very closely where it's only marginally profitable. Commoditization. Now commodities are soft because farming gained scale, got bigger, uh, more equipment, but most of those profits got taken away from your farmers, hogged by your food chain uh, providers, the normal retailers of this world, Tesco, pick and pay, Walmart, these are the gougers that actually put great pressure on uh, providers and suppliers and have too much power in the chain. But nonetheless, nonetheless, eventually, if you're destroying currency, eventually people just to get up in the morning and plant seeds and look after agricultural aspects, uh, they need to get a fair return. If there is proliferation going on to the degree that we are becoming aware. So this is obviously faster than inflation. In fact, as I say, who knows how much it's done. Let's do a measure. In fact, I did this before. From the lows of 22, let's do the measuring tool. Here we go. From the lows of 22 in cacao to the giddy heights of today, you have done 345 to six percent, three hundred and forty-five uh, percent. Remember, one hundred percent is double. Three hundred and forty-five is essentially four and a half times. Four and a half times in cost, uh, and that's quite easy to see because you're around two thousand, uh, and now you're at nine thousand, two thousand one hundred. So quite an extensive gain, you might say. Um, and for me, it's the substitute for the dirty juice that makes me jump up and down and sweat. That's right, coffee. So maybe we need to have a look at the other markets such as coffee and now we have to talk about the two beans first of all i'm going to show you the cheaper bean now in a world where um, substitution will take place by suppliers you get blends which could involve both robusta and arabica beans so the pure arabica plays will be getting more expensive as the more costly bean in this inflationary environment what you might see is a drift down to more blends and more use of robusta how has the robusta price chart looked well since this inverted head and shoulders that we called some time ago inside our community and i think we actually might have done a video on it as well uh, right here on youtube some time ago and there was in fact a low around about 220 2020 you know what that date that special date in march where all things got a bit funky um anyway how's robusta done now very few things are going to match the cacao chart in terms of its recent moves but i can tell you up to here it's done rather well it's done 225 percent since the events of march 2020 since the events of 2020 of course we march 2024 it's a perfect four years and you've gone up 225 percent that again is three and a quarter times it should be let's go check the math 1073 times by three and a quarter you're getting to three and a half that's kind of smells right to me. So even our maths is passing the test. This cacao is good stuff. It's got the veins going to the brain in the head. Ooh, I knew what you were thinking there. You giggling in the back of the class. Um, anyway, I'll start growing hair soon. Anyway, back to this. Big, big moves also in uh, coffee. It kind of, uh, you know, this is this is a soft, this is a heart of the soft agries, by the way. Um, and we're going to go over to 
our friend that we are here to tell you about, the more expensive Arabica bean. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, or here she comes. I don't know what gender to give a coffee bean. I'd hate to misgender a bean and to be called a racist and an anti-Semite, uh, but who knows? Uh, it could, it could. There I go. I say words that will upset the YouTube channel. Even in humor, we fail. We fail dismally. But anyway, you like our channel, and that's why you hit the like button right now, because we're cranky, fun, but accurate, and the best macro technical analysts out there. That's right. Using HVF method, you too can learn and click that first link in the very first post under in the notes and go and book a call or you can just sit and watch and decide if you really like us if you're new to the channel um, so bigger time frames i'm going to give you a deep dive kind of what the setup i did for the community only you're getting it late that's the difference you find out about things later but that's okay it's better to find out about things than never to find out about things and there's still plenty of upside to potentially enjoy providing you now to break in now usually in commodities we do what we're calling a tops and tails and typically it's been a little bit of a selling vibe that needs to come in when you're getting to the high end of the tops part now this is also reflected the relative inflation cycles and the disinflationary cycles in the macroeconomic economy that won't surprise you hence why i say focus less about the individual fundamentals of the industry, recognize that ground swell softs are going to march. Uh, certain ones will march more, certain ones may have been undervalued, some have already marched very far, like the cacao, um, but generally they reflect inflation cycles and this, my friends, is a hyper-stagflationary cycle that we don't see ending until reset and new forms of everything and who knows whether we'll still have any form of freedom by that time. So these are the low points. You can see, for example, the end of the dot-com boom. You're on the low side. That was a very disinflationary time. You can see also, as we came into 2020, pretty low, below the mid mark. That is the halfway mark, by the way. It looks skiff because we are in, you guessed it, log scale. So if we do that, you can see you're dipping kind of low uh, during that period. However, it's kind of more inflationary. So you didn't get to run through the green line like you had in the great 1999-2000 dot-com crash, which was probably the first version of a depression that we had. Uh, this was clearly the second um, because there was the full-on uh, fiat uh, bank failure uh, that went with it uh, and is global. Anyway, we broke out of this falling wedge is the part that I want to talk to you about. Uh, we got nice and schizo and zip, 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 and off we went and we went for a little trot to the high side. However, we got backed off during 22, we had this disinflation revive that coincided, by the way, with the dollar putting on some strength. The dollar had to beat his chest. There was too much going on uh, and down she came. And this brings us to the weekly time frame. Let's drop down to the weekly. So out the falling wedge. There you go. A little bit of a, a, a key level there of 200. Why is it a key level? Because of what we're calling here a W bottom. A W bottom. So there's a pattern of a W bottom that we think is going to play out to the high side and take you into the red zone. That's right, when soft commodities come at you hard. Uh, so let's drop the time frame a little more and uh, give you the blowdown on this. Now, we've even had a couple of Twitter people uh, referring to us about, hey, have you seen the, the Arabica? They know how we trade. Uh, they watch videos, they like and subscribe and hit always so that they never miss a sniper video because he says stupid words that the algo doesn't like. You must confuse the algo. Pretend you like us even if you hate us. Um, anyway, so nice little uh, structure of a squeeze coming out over here. And of course, we've seen how the Robusta bean is doing pretty sprightly, not quite like cacao. They're all slowly getting a little bit less, but Arabica, Arabica, mm, W bottom and a wind up structure right here. What's it going to be eyeballing? I think it's eyeballing the break above the 200 and the 203 mark. In those events, regardless if you take the key round number or the slightly higher, more aggressive targeting number, we see a event for upside in coffee as part and parcel of the great inflation. Remember, they want to tax you a little more. Not only did, by the way, do they charge you all those taxes I mentioned and then cheat tax you with inflation, but they still spend more and steal more to all their pet projects where they've got contractors and backhanders, so much so that they build debt. And now they've built so much debt 
They actually need to dis devalue that debt. One of the best ways to devalue that debt is to pay less interest than there truly is currency inflation. That's called a negative interest rate, which devalues the debt. Guess what happens to you on that? More devaluation of your currency than is actually being told. More tax you pay on the great inflation tax and more you pay for your coffee and everything else. And you earn more eventually, slowly, in a sort of negative interest way, lagging inflation rate, yet now both you and your wife with your multiple jobs feel poorer and have much less holiday time, much less rest, etc. That is the great game uh, of putting you behind the wrong side of a compound interest equation. But we've covered that, so back to coffee. Where's the targeting, you ask? Well, let's show you. This is where the targeting is, 282 to the 290s, and we suspect the magical number of 300 could potentially fall um, in terms of this contract. You're at 188 at the moment. 188 at the moment. Of course, there's an HVF target which is generated from that. Uh, you can find out how we do all those draws. You can check it out in our link below. First, first, first link in the notes below. And you can find out how and why we were in this. Mm, feels like a week but maybe it's only six days ago, um, and why it's of interest to us. What does this mean generally for everybody right now? It means, friends, it means, friends, that the inflation is coming and softs are going to get more expensive, certain things more so than others. You can see from this that uh, the Arabica bean is some way off previous highs. If I give you a little bit more time frame, you can see the previous highs up top here at the two day uh, on the two day chart in and around the 261. By the way, we go back to that monthly chart and you haven't seen the highs. When did these highs occur? One wonders. One wonders when these highs occur. And we go and we find that in the lead up to the great inflation post Vietnam War and printing and the unhinging of the dollar from of gold from the dollar, let's say in 1971, that uh, we were heading into a gold bull market, which peaked in 81, that you coincidentally were also having a major run up in those prices uh, as we got ahead of what technology was offering us at the time in terms of Arabica bean uh, valuation. Okay, well, speaking of gold, I'm going to finish on a little gold chart. Why not? Why not? Uh, Goldilocks is trading higher uh, on this beautiful day, and we are on the day chart. This is a new all-time high. This is something we've been pushing for an extended period. It's going to mean, uh, eventually, the tension in the rubber bungee cord from the 4x4 that is gold with its God market engine driving precious metals up the hill is building. And the silver left in the trailer, that amazingly is not on a tow bar, but is on this fat bungee cord. The pressure is building and building. The tension is building and building. And eventually, snap, bang, silver will come back running and catch up a little bit with the 4x4. Oh, that is climbing the hill. But for now, it is a gold market. It is a gold market, God market, bull market. There you go. You got it to you straight. All the G's, you need to be in gold. And this as well, my friends, is part and parcel of what we are highlighting as an inflation. It's a stagflation because you ain't making so much more money. You ain't having money poured down on you. In fact, it feels like a recession for you. But somehow things are going up. Inputs are going up. Everything's in the bull market. The equity market's in the bull market. The Japanese Nikkei is making new highs for the first time in 35 years. That's right. Everything is up except your wealth factor. That is the cost of the stagflationary game. When we've got to laugh, the minute you realize it, the minute you get into other things that go up at least as fast or faster, such as Bitcoin and gold. So gold making new highs. We had a little bit of a trade we had mentioned. So we'll show you this one as a tag on to our soft commodities. You've got to give you some yellow juice as well amidst all of that hardness. Um, and that is gold. Uh, so we're going to show you gold versus the euro. So actually across currencies, certain things, can, sometimes you can have a better setup on the currencies versus uh, the euro. We actually like the gold pound, but the euro is more easy to find and tradable. So we go in here and we place it for you. 
here she comes now, here she comes, uh, also making new highs, 2049 uh, in the new highs department, uh, dollar was lagging that, so the dollar's been relatively uh, stronger than the uh, uh, gold euro pair, and of course gold GBP we will have expected to go uh, higher as well. We were sharing a couple of charts, let's see if we've got those. So I want to show you this guy first of all um, and show you this over here. So we were talking about coffee and I'm going to come back and finish on gold again but I did a chart for you that I almost forgot to show you. Coffee Robusta Bean versus uh, gold below and what I'm highlighting in the blue runs, those are the ice cold pullback periods kind of can be a bit disinflationary, could be periods where the dollar is strong, and then the pink level lines are the moves up. These are both daily charts. Uh, we can make it a tiny bit bigger. Can we fit the screen anymore? Now yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll start disappearing off the bottom if I do that. Uh, so we'll stay with fit to screen. But I think it's clear for you to see, just as a sketch, that gold typically leads on the inflationary cycle. For example, over here, you could see that the coffee low came in there, you weren't much higher at that point, but the gold final low was over there, a little bit ahead. Gold high over here, but you still rocked on on the soft, so there's a little bit of a leagues and lags aspect about it. You pull, the other takes up some tension for a while, builds up some potential energy, then starts coming and then overshoots slightly. The low again here, which we had uh, for gold, and you can see if I go directly up, it's around about here, the, the commodities still went a little bit on before they went. But then the up leg, they were still climbing uh, probably just after gold had topped out for a bit of a rest. So this is it. But what you can clearly see is these things go up together. And that is a function of the dollar, and that is a function of debt, and that is a function of inflation. All the devils are here, my friends. All the devils are here. All the dirty little tricks of the mercantilist Pharisees that have captured all the key industries, politics, media, law, academia, you name it. Welcome to your slave planet. <laughs> We're going to laugh and chuckle and live our best lives in spite of that. Uh, but this is clearly something that is going to see more high prices on the soft side you can make some money some beta some alpha in uh, the coffee markets in the arabica bean you can charge it higher up uh, and turn that into gold and ensure that you too are protected in this inflationary uh, environment just in these times as even commoditized products soft commodity uh, products come at you hard Till next time, we'll catch you later. Don't forget, book a call, join our community. First link below. Um, drop us a, a little comment. What's the next soft for you that you think is going to start raging like a bull? We've got some uh, our eye and we're trading with leverage in the Arabica coffee, but we're ready and able to get into others. Uh, okay, catch you next time and look forward to your comments. We read all comments and we always delete nasty spammers. Bye for now.